Welcome to the Kinjas Podcast. Here we will discuss dance, life, and whatever the f we want. Folks, welcome back or welcome to Kinjas Movement in the Shadows. We are your host, Ben and Anthony. And as always, we have an amazing guest in the pod today. Today we have actress, dancer, artist, choreographer, and content creator. You may recognize her from So You Think You Can Dance Season 16 and Dancing With Myself Season 1. In 2022, she was named an inaugural honoree of Meta's Creators of Tomorrow for Creative Excellence. Whoa. Adweek's Creative Top 100 and was featured as an artist at the TED Talk 22. You've seen her funny, quirky, straight, joy-giving content all over TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. Today we have Sarah Smack McCreener hey. in the pod. Goodness. Wow. Did that, that intro make you uncomfortable? Yes. I pulled that straight off of your website. Well, I know. So I thought whatever it was familiar. on there. <laughs> Either you wrote it or someone else did. So it was me. Okay, good. The only thing that made me uncomfortable was the fact that this is my first time learning her name is Sarah. Yeah, I, I felt uncomfortable. Up. I usually I forget. I looked that up. I figured your name, your real name, wasn't Smack. Well, wow. Wh- where Thanks. did like where did Smack come from? What is well, the Sarah Mac? Ah, duh. <laughs> it's Makes so sense. boring. We yeah. are yeah. geniuses in here. There it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did that when I was like nine years old. Um, there was a lot of Sarahs in my dance class, and I thought, right, I've got to figure something out. So you were out. smacked since nine years old. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Wait, like in Australia, you usually go by your last name anyway, or a nickname of some kind. Mm-hmm. And I literally remember sitting at the kitchen table and like writing down variations, and I was like, this one, smack. And then I wrote it on all my school and it books. Stuck. And um, spelled the way S M A C. Yeah. And Damn. that was it. That's like. That's already like hip hop already. You know, I, know, I thought I it was K right hip-hop. off top. You know, I thought <laughs> it was a hip hop thing. I didn't even know what hip hop was back then. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't okay. think I know what it is now. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, Smack, thank you so much for coming through the thank pod. You. Um, as we love to do with our first time guests is to get to know you a little bit deeper into the origins of where Smack comes from. So <laughs> however deep you want to go, walk us through your your origin story. Okay. Well, I am Australian and now I live in LA. That's pretty much it. That's it. The <laughs> um, end. I guess so. In, in Australia, I grew up, um, I was super shy and I didn't like talking at all, even to my family. I was terrified of everything. So my mom put me in dance class and I hated it. And um, and then eventually I loved it at some how, point. How old were you when she put you in dance class? I was five. I missed that, missed that point. Um, I was five. I did tap classes and I remember like she paid for like a whole term or like however many weeks and I was sitting in the corner crying and I like really remember this. I hated it. I was like, I don't like these people. I don't like anything. And um, (laughs) so I just remember crying. But then by the end of the term, we had like a performance and it was in a a shopping mall and I got a costume and I was on stage and there's a video of this and I just kind of knew what I was doing somehow. And then we did it twice. And then my dance teacher comes and she like pushed me to the front. And then I was just like, why was I doing TikTok at five years old? <laughs> it actually kind of was TikTok vibes. But yeah. So, so you remember um, the choreography like that? Well, there's a video. So oh, okay. I don't know if I can take it. And then, and then that's like the moment once you were actually on stage, like some some sort of X factor kicked in. I don't know if it was that apparent, but I guess my mom paid for more classes and I stayed. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you go from hating it to loving it? Um. Wow, that's deep. I don't remember that specifically. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to keep it shallow on this show. Yeah, got man. it, got on, it. But this bad, was surface bad. level only. <laughs> um, I think there was a clear moment where I realized I loved everything to do with performing. Mm. And that was probably when I was like eight or nine years old. Um, and everything I did inspiration-wise came like from comedy. So it was just um, some Australian comedians or even like Mr. Bean, Three Stooges and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I just started imitating them as a kid and just playing around in my lounge room with my friend. And then we put on like, we would create our own little performances like most kids do, like playing dress ups. Um, and then we did at some like talent shows and people just kept laughing. So I'm like, oh, that's fun. And then our dance teacher, this is kind of crazy, but our dance teacher just let us do our own performances at competition. So she's like, that's cool. You can do that at the competition. Like you choreographed it yourself. You picked your own music. You yeah. picked your own costume and everything like that. It was that. Our, our Halloween talent show. We did like a Tweedledee, Tweedledum thing with me, my my best friend at the time. And we did it at competitions all around our like city and then just kept winning. So we're like, oh, 
we were like eight That's year olds and we're like this is fun so, so the the director of your studio is just kind of like yeah let, yep. let's just you guys i'm imagining like a feels. like a old director like holding like a glass of wine smoking a cigarette not caring anymore like, definitely yeah, the children cigarette, whatever definitely. do whatever Everyone. your show you want <laughs> yeah Give i mean another it bottle was, of wine <laughs> i like i can only really compare it to what i've seen like studio because it's like a typical dance studio um american versions of that are way more strict than what i grew up with this was like i didn't do ballet we just did tap and jazz and they let us play it was very much like focusing on performance yeah i mean like i was the kid that like i guess in that that like setting i was kind of the only one that could do some acrobatic tricks so she would always be like oh yeah like you just go across the front do whatever you want there and i'm like okay so then i would like start doing flips or whatever and i just taught myself that but then there was a part where um it was like a novelty routine, like musical theater vibes. And then she's like, yeah, you can do your thing at the front. And for some reason, I don't know why I did this. I just imagine I had a banana and did like the banana peel fall. And she never told me not to do it. So I kept doing it. So then like anytime I would have a little solo moment for competition dances, I would do something like that. And um, is that like the shablam? The, yeah. the banana. <laughs> As if banana, I could even do that. Leaf fall? Um, no, it was a straight up fall. <laughs> not graceful but it, the intention was like comedy you just like, yeah. enjoyed kind of like the entertainment of making people laugh or like making yourself laugh and stuff it was like honestly in making myself laugh i didn't really think about other people laughing i was just like i thought it was funny and then <laughs> that was it no one was telling me to do anything else so i just kept doing it yeah mm, that's amazing it that's, was the freedom that was like yeah that's probably the di the main difference right there between like american dance schools They'd be mm. like, don't do the banana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's forbidden. You got to win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, unless your foot is pointed or something. But yeah, for some reason, the freedom was really there. And um, yeah, they just let me like play. So I was really lucky with that. I, I don't know if this is fast forwarding too much. Was uh, was dance specifically the reason why you moved to America? Um, Not really. I think so. I did like competition dance in Australia Um, from like, seven years old to I think 14 and then I quit because uh, I didn't have a thing like a big dramatic quit I was just like going to a different school that was too far away um, for high school and then I was focusing more on like theater and visual arts and comedy stuff as a kid um, so I just like stopped going to dance class and I was like yeah I'm over it and um, through that like the last couple of years of high school I was doing a lot of theater and experimental like performance work through my school they also gave me a lot of freedom and um, just the school that I went to, uh, they just kind of, man, they really supported me doing whatever the hell I wanted to do. I was really lucky. I didn't ever feel limited. That's um, crazy. I don't really think I was like technically supported in that. I was really just in my own world doing what I wanted. No one really said anything and it was fine. Um, but yeah, so then I started doing a little bit. Then someone asked me to do like a circus thing. So then I learned a bit of circus. And then someone asked me to do a comedy festival. I did that. I was kind of just doing all these sorts of things. But the reason I came to America was because um, my first professional audition in Australia was for the this stage production of How to Train Your Dragon. Astrid. Yes. That's right. Yeah. So that was just a damn fluke, honestly, because they auditioned around the world. Like they auditioned in LA a bunch of times. They went to like Paris, London, everywhere. And I think I was 17 when I auditioned. Um, and I didn't know like, cause it hadn't been done before. It's a stage uh, version of the movie. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really know what I was auditioning for. They just. So was this like a, uh, like a theater role versus just like a dancer? Yeah, It wasn't dancing at all. This oh. was like acting oh. and then stunt work. So like fighting dragons and stuff, but I actually had to fly in a state to do the audition. And then I didn't hear anything back until six months later. And they're like, you got a call back. And I was like, what? That's still going? Because I had flown around the world to audition. It was like really, I don't know why it was so intense. Um, but yeah, that was just like, a, that was a fluke, honestly. Was and, there any acting experience that you had prior to auditioning for this? Um, I guess so. Like theater, yeah. I'd done that. And then the dance studio I did grow up at also had a drama department. It was mostly just playing games. <laughs> And dress ups, but I, I've always felt just like very comfortable doing whatever on stage. So I was never like, I don't know why I didn't have that kind of like insecurity of like, oh, now I'm trying acting. I was just like, okay, mm. give me the script. You said you were shy as a kid. You didn't mm -hmm. like, you said you didn't even like talking to your family. And, you know, I, I, I'm always interested when people who uh, are, or they identify as being shy, but they have this very, you know, 
other person that comes out when it comes to performance. Um, was there something or somebody that encouraged you as you were being yourself, as you were having fun? Was there somebody kind of in your corner like, hey, it's working. You're doing a good job. Like, what was that thing that made you feel like, yeah, it's fun for yourself, but then there's yeah. got to be something that makes you feel like, I want to keep doing this because, is it just because it's fun or is it because you feel like you're getting positive reinforcement from people? Um, I think I definitely was getting validated at these dance competitions because mm -hmm. I was walking away as the winner. And I was like, okay, well. Yeah. That's, a, I mean, this is a very local competition. Um, it's not at anything like what I would see, you know, on TV with like American dance studios. But that was enough validation for me to be like, okay, I'll do it next week again. Like it just made me keep going. Mm -hmm. um, I think, so I, I feel like I I learned about this recently and I don't know enough about it, but I think I had selective mutism, which is when you just like don't talk to certain people for whatever reason. And I think I had that possibly even still now, but I think that's why dance made it so much easier for me to just express because I didn't have to speak. So I was always super comfortable moving, but as soon as someone came to the room, I'm like, <laughs> like mm. I just couldn't talk. I couldn't mm. talk to my parents, like school, I was really quiet. Um, yeah, I was just kind of always thinking of other things. And I, I don't know why I wasn't very good at conversation. I honestly feel like I only really learned how to do that in the last like five years. Ryan Holt, <laughs> he's wow. very good at talking. He's like a great therapist. So um, yeah, but I feel like I've always, if anything, I'm way stronger just being physical and performing, that's fine. But if it was talking, I was always like, oh, I'll figure that out later. Wow. We're what definitely was, honored to have you coming on to a talking <laughs> yeah. show. I'm fine now like I could, <laughs> because I know what to talk about. But yeah, as a kid, I think for some reason I was just didn't want interaction. Yeah. I was like terrified of it. Could we ask a little bit deeper about like the past five years of your journey of feeling comfortable talking? You said, Ryan, your your boyfriend kind of helped you yeah, I break mean, out of this shell. I mean, maybe not just the last five years, but like adult life definitely has helped. Um, I've, yeah, I think like I left home when I was 18. So I've been by myself ever since. I don't like really see my family or even talk to them. So I've always felt very independent. Um, and that just makes you kind of grow up. So mm. I feel like. Yeah. And you've been in LA for, you said, how, how long? Yeah, 10 years, 10 years. Like next week, I think. Wow. wow. Happy anniversary. Okay, so yeah. so going back to the timeline, you yeah. uh, booked this uh, How to Train Your Dragon. Uh, you came to LA to audition for it. You hear about it six months later. And then was that the thing that catapulted you being like, I got to go to LA and keep this up? Like, No. Okay, this is so embarrassing, but whatever. Um, I didn't know Hollywood was in LA. I didn't know what that was. I just didn't know. I was like, I've heard of Hollywood and I've probably heard of LA from movies, but I didn't know anything about America or this industry at all. Um, but the show that I did, it was a tour. So we went around Australia, New Zealand, um, Canada, and then also USA. And then it just happened that, this sounds a little bit morbid, but we all got fired when we were in Anaheim because the DreamWorks sold the show to China. So we were all just sitting there, we're like, oh, okay, well, I guess this is it. So that was the end of my contract. It was meant to be indefinite, and then it just kind of ended suddenly. Uh, but I had a visa, a work visa, and um, I had enough money saved up. And then at the last performance, someone from MSA Dance Agency saw the show, and then they were kind of just doing the the agency thing. They're like, oh, mm -hmm. if anyone, like, because it was a very international cast, like, if anyone wants to move here, we can talk about sponsorship. And so I caught the train to the office the next day and signed. And I was like, someone saw me perform. You said sponsorship. And then they're like, okay. And I signed a contract with them and then looked on Craigslist and found an apartment and then just moved here. So when you, when you got let go or fired in Anaheim, you just didn't ever go back home. No. Yeah. Well, we had like two weeks. I think we got fired when we were in like San Fran and then the, the contract ended in Anaheim though. But yeah, I didn't go home. I just came to LA the next day. Whoa. Yeah. Hmm. That's that's kind of wild. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. it was kind of wild. Um I <laughs> I always like I don't really talk about this too publicly because I don't want the person to find out, but I um I'm very I I get motivated by like one thing sometimes and it just makes me change my life. And I saw this person online um and friends of mine were like you know, Australian friends like, oh, there's some Aussies in, in LA, you should connect with them, which is like a great thing to do. 
And I didn't connect with this person, but they I got their name. So I looked online and I saw that they were like, I'm a professional dancer in LA. And I researched the hell out of them and I was like, that's all it takes. Okay, I'll do this tomorrow. <laughs> that is why I moved here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you, person. <laughs> well, so what's, no, their, what's their first like, and last name? <laughs> yeah, no way. Not saying that they weren't, like, they're still working today. They're not, like, not professional. Yeah, but yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, that's easy. Okay. Did you ever connect with this person? Kind of, but not really. <laughs> okay. So yeah. this person was your motivator. And, yeah. And yeah. does this person know that? No. Wow, that's interesting. No, they would never know. But that's like, it. sometimes it, it just takes that one thing for me to be like, oh, okay, cool, challenge accepted. And I don't really like, I never put pressure on myself or anything. I'm just like, eh. And, and at try. that point, were you like, in your mind settled, like you're like, I'm going to be a performer or entertainer or like, where were you at age 18, you know, doing yeah. How to Train Your Dragon? I was 20 by that point. So we toured for two years. Oh, you years. were doing it for two yeah. years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, or, where, where were you mentally in terms of, like, what um, you were planning on doing for your career? Because, like, kind of, like, on yeah. a whim type of, like, oh, dang, I just got let go and I'm in this country that's not my native country. I'm just going to stay here. That's, like, that's pretty That's pretty wild. <laughs> I'm just going to say yeah, that Yeah, but, but you only need to see one person doing it to be like, oh, it's easy. Okay. <laughs> But that's what I'm saying. Did you ever have, you already had sights or or, or like the idea of like pursuing entertainment in LA? No, I never thought about coming to LA. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't have a care about it even because I was like, I just was fine doing whatever. Um, So I think I've, I still to this day don't really have goals. And that's really helped me never be disappointed in anything I've ever done. That's, that's done. a social media soundbite right there. Yeah. To this day, I don't have goals. I just don't. Like I have things I'm like, oh, that'd be cool. And I've achieved things that I didn't think I would, but I'm like, oh, that was like a cool milestone. And now I want to like work on it to get the next milestone. But I really don't have long-term goals. Um, and I never have. Because I think anytime someone may have asked me that, I kind of never really knew which direction. So I'm like, oh, I'll just have to try it all and do it all. And I still, I guess, I'm trying to do that. But yeah, mentally, I think back then I was the same as I am now. I'm like, well, I look at everything as very temporary. So I'm like, it's fine. If I hate it, I'll just go back home. Yeah. Wow. So because I think a lot of people, now that I know how people come to LA, especially from other states in America, it's like the pressure is insane that they put on themselves to be like, I think it's also a family thing. My family have never asked what I'm doing or like have never expected anything from me so i've it's always been very independent so my choice completely but hearing other people say like oh, i'm going to la and it's like this is it like if it doesn't work out i don't know what to do i think that pressure is like what can set you up for a mm, lot of disappointment yeah yeah are you you're not very close with your family i not really i mean they're really far mm-hmm. so but um no i think we just didn't have a tight-knit family growing up Mm. um we're very just like do our own thing but i also think that that's like been really helpful for me to like i just feel like no one's ever limited me in any way Mm -hmm. like i know that that could have helped shaped where i'm going but it also was like i just don't really care what people (laughs) what Mm. they think because i don't think they think that much i mean they're like proud i still talk to them but they never were like Make sure you finish school. I think I was the first person in my family to finish high school. Oh, So wow. it's not like... Was that the extent of school, high school, and then that was it? I did university. I went to uni for like, or college for um, a couple of years to do visual art. I was doing an art major because uh, I thought that was the easiest. <laughs> and um, in Australia, it's it's kind of at that point was cheap enough and affordable enough for me to do that because I had spare time. I wasn't going there because I enjoy school, but I had the time to do it. And then I quit when I got How to Train Your Dragon. So I was like, well, so I'm a dropout. But yeah, no one made me do school or or anything like that. That was like, no one expected anything Mm -hmm. for me to do anything. I don't know this what is they... a super unique story <laughs> in Very. terms of like how the the building blocks add up and yeah. where they end up leading to. It's like that is really unique. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. It's a bit weird. But amazing. Hey, cheers to that. Cheers, the, the everyone. Let's get is, cheers to that. Yes, what? I love it. Boom. Um, you know, I, it's so funny when, like, um, I, I mean, I, I don't mean any offense by this, but for whatever <laughs> reason, the word that comes to mind when I hear you speak, is, or the term is free spirit. 
And I know some some people don't like that term or why? You know, What's wrong? I don't know. Yeah. I, don't know. I, I thought you were gonna say something way worse. No, no. I mean, well, <laughs> you know, I, I guess like people may. <laughs> you sound like an idiot. No, I think people kind of interpret that as like free spirit is like uh, like you don't have your shit together. Yeah, you don't have yeah. any no plans. You just kind of go well, with the wind, and it's yeah. kind of like you're like a carefree person. Um, but I, I'm not defining it in that way. I think like you know, I think it's so easy to get caught up especially with you know uh social media kind of creates this like hustle culture of mm -hmm. vision boards and 10-year plans and you know daily routines that like you have to stick by and, and those who succeed all kind of follow this like similar format of life yeah and and i'm not saying that doesn't work and um, that doesn't exist. I, I I personally kind of err more on that side for me like personally. I feel like that's the more typical thing that does work. Right. <laughs> but, but that's also not to say that there isn't another way. Yeah. And, and I think the way that you um, sort of look at life and approach it is um, kind of just like one thing at a time, right? You don't really have to think like, oh, what is this going to lead to? If I do this, is that going to set me up for the next thing? And mm -hmm. you don't really necessarily think of what that next thing is. Like all that matters is the thing that's in front of you now. But that's almost kind of cooler because you are undistracted. Like it's just the one thing and mm -hmm. that's all that really matters. So then you can pour almost like you're undivided 100% into that thing and then, as you said, if you get bored of it or if it just stops becoming interesting, you'll see what else is interesting. And then that'll be the next thing that you pour 100 percent into. So I think in some ways, um, maybe even better because you just are able to hyper focus um, versus thinking about this. But then also like looking in the periphery of like, OK, but is that is that still going to be possible? And you know what I mean? So your, your focus yeah. can be divided up. So I think it's really interesting how and you feel so comfortable with that like i don't feel this any sense from you where you're like oh maybe i should be a little bit more like you know make plans and do this or that you're like no if i'm like know, this i'm just gonna go home i don't know why that is because that is normal to be like i don't know <laughs> worried or whatever like i'm um, 30 but hmm. for some reason i've very much just always been relaxed i don't know if that's just like an my crazy annoying ego just being like ah, it'll be fine no matter what but I, that is something i tell myself i'm like yeah it's fine no matter what well i mean you know you are a creator and and that is maybe like a 2023 way of saying like artist you know what i mean mm -hmm. like if we were all just chilling in like the 1700s like the way that you would be dishing out content <laughs> at the that's like an artist you know what i'm saying and i say that because i feel like sometimes uh great art doesn't come from the, the schedule you know what I mean? Pre-planning when you're going to make a masterpiece or anything like that. When you mm -hmm. get hit with something, you do it. When you don't want to do something, you sometimes don't. You mope around in your emotion in order to like feel it out and do the next thing. Um, but like I, when I see what you do, obviously it's – I don't see um, like a, a form – No, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see like a formula like other people yeah. might have that do like similar things in the social media content space or anything. Everything that you do is like – clearly an in, uh, invention in your mind you're just who else is getting hydraulic presses you know what i'm saying and just like i don't know, I don't know why no one's that. jumping on that just you know <laughs> it's not it's not like she's doing a certain type of trend she, if anything she's creating trends or right. just doing something unique and i think those things are like um they're very artist of you mm. you know like to kind of like just take it as it comes and then do what you feel like i, I that's my like tipping it off to like that's an artist that's, at work you know i really feel like that's how i've been since i was a kid and so my way of thinking and creating has never changed i i've only developed extra skills that add to it i guess but like yeah i've never changed the way I, be before I we get anything. too ahead of ourselves in like the philosophy of it like <laughs> would you be able to explain almost like uh in terms of the timeline like how because we definitely consider you successful so i'm just going to use the, the term success uh, you're obviously how did you kind of like rise to this level of success like what were the things was it like okay the, whether it be the discovery of a hydraulic press on this yeah. one day to whatever it is that kind of like built up that story for you well i think backstory because i don't know maybe this helps but ever since i was a kid i've loved um short form content vibes even though i didn't know what content was back then so creating stuff as soon as i got a camera i was always constantly creating things by myself with my friends i was always telling people what to do um editing i've always loved it so much uh and then i realized at probably like 15 years old that 
the best way to describe the weird stuff in my head is to put it under the umbrella of an artist. So that's when I started doing visual art as my major at high school and stuff. Cause I was like, oh cool, I can get away with anything. Great. So my my assignments would be like, I love photography as well. Photography, video editing, um, mixed media. I attempted some drawing stuff. I'm not good at it. But then I was like, oh, the easiest thing for me to do is performance art. And it was always me making fun of it. So even back then at high school for my like final assignment was me doing a performance piece. And I was like, this is just so easy. <laughs> and hmm. I will always do the easiest option if that's there because I'm lazy. So I think, why am I saying this? Oh, so I don't know why I'm saying this. There was a point. I don't know where it is. Um, where it goes in the story oh, and how yeah, it led yeah. to you right. doing what you're well, doing. Well, that's why, fast forward, that's why content creating is effortless for me not saying it looks effortless but for me like I really feel like I don't have to put much effort into it it's just all fun and games but so anyway then I um when I came to LA in Australia I was creating all my own work I've always done that there wasn't really work that other people were giving me so I was writing my own stuff filming my own stuff performing my own stuff and just doing my own stuff and then I got the job to travel and then when I moved to LA and, and when you say you were writing and performing doing your own stuff like I was that on like a platform? Was that just for like stages? Was that like on? It was for stage mostly because okay. back then this is like 2010 or something. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. it was like, yeah, I I didn't have social media or anything back then. I was starting to watch some YouTube like Double Rainbow and that was about it. Double Rainbow. That was like my introduction to YouTube, yeah. I think. You remember that? The Double Rainbow? When no. All like across the sky. And they're just like crying because they're seeing two rainbows. <laughs> no. Oh my God. Old school viral clip. It's the clip. best video play. Anyway. Play um, <laughs> but yeah, when I moved to LA, everything completely shifted because all of a sudden I realized I am now just doing what other people tell me to do work-wise. So I moved here um, and... Uh, no one told me this. I've never had a mentor or anyone helping me. And I never reach out because I don't like talking to people enough to ask for anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I was like, oh, let me just go on Craigslist. I just heard what Craigslist was. That didn't exist in Australia. So I start looking up like acting, dance, whatever. Saw a lot of weird stuff on there. Um, <laughs> but submitted myself for a short film and booked it. So I was like, oh, cool. My first audition, I booked a short film. And then that went to like the film festival in Hollywood. And I was like, oh, that's cool. So like already my first experience here, and I knew it was like a small thing, like a student thing, but I was like, already it was validating to me that, okay, so I figured out something. I need to search for my own work and then I need to be good enough to book it. So then I just continued doing that. Um, I would say a, a year into it, I started, I still only had one dance agent, so I was still self-submitting myself. Still from MSA. Yeah, I think at that time. Um and like casting websites, you know, like if people are into that, it's it's basically like scrolling online, just looking for what you mm -hmm. suit. And I would do that all day long. And I would just like, and I'm not doing it out of desperation where I'm like, I've got to find something. I'm like generally curious and kind of loving it, like, like window shopping. And I'm like, oh, I could do that. So I kept submitting myself and then I started getting auditions and then I started booking. But I would say like after a year or two of being in LA, then I started getting commercial bookings. And for some reason that has just been a huge blessing and journey that's just like- Yeah, you're low key like the Snoop Dogg of commercials. <laughs> like you're just in everything in like every language, every country, in every like <laughs> uh, industry, technology, car, like it's whatever, weird. you're just in a lot. You are- um, probably more successful in commercial bookings than most people I even know in the entertainment industry. That's dope. It's it's a strange thing that just happened, and I think I'm a good blank canvas for it. So when they're like, "We just need a white girl," I'm like, "I can do that." And then they're like, "We need her to be just a little bit something else." I'm like, "Well, here's some other things I have." So I think I'm just good at adapting. Um, I also just laugh at it so much. I think it's like like so cheesy that I have such a, I get such a kick out of it. But yeah, I think commercially for some reason that just took me and like, I'm still doing them. I did one last week. I think it was my 70th commercial. Wow. And that's 70th like. 70th commercial. Do you know anybody who's in 70 <laughs> commercials? This is an old just TV. This is like even print jobs, sure. like streaming commercials, whatever. But it's still like, it was an audition I had to do and got the work. So I was like, that is definitely 
a reward. Like that that feeling is pretty. And cool. for context to any of our fans, name five uh, corporations or companies that you've done commercials for. Um, the ones that are out right now. Anything. Lowe's. Sparkle, I'm like the face of the fairy for Sparkle Paper Towel. That's um, cool. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this one. Home Goods soon. And then I've done Apple and like Facebook, Google, all the car ones. I've kind of done every category except for chocolate. And that's the only thing I care about. Oh, that one's so, coming. That it one's needs easy. to be a white Very chocolate Russia. though. You know how it is. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do. I'm definitely not the type that they need. But. I like the nonchalance of like, yeah, all the car ones. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I didn't do one. Tesla. I don't know. There's a lot that I haven't. I haven't done Chevy. But um, yeah, I kind of like, for some reason, I just fell into that and it just kept going. And I know that like, it's a kind of a pattern as well. Like casting directors now know me. So that even if I don't suit the audition, they'll probably bring me into audition. So I know that like the numbers really help. And it was yeah. just like, practicing every time i auditioned i was like this is great so i i I would say for the average joe listener out there which is me (laughs) um this can sound very like who is this person like uh, how does this person exist i only know of a couple of people that i feel like they'll say they don't really train they don't really practice but they just always have it um would you categorize yourself as someone that um trains like do you take classes like do you like what does your practicing regimen look like how do you how does smack practice her craft uh (laughs) no i don't i don't i hate class (laughs) wait see the thing is i think there's there's one underlying (laughs) tone in her nonchalance and humility that i feel like needs to be highlighted and it's like you know i don't train i don't have like this type of goal or this structure i'm doing it in an atypical way that blah 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 but the the thing that i'm like holding on to is like the um you're willing to get on stage when you're young and and win and then get on the next one or like when you got or you were willing to fly across the world to do an audition Mm -hmm. like that's already a bigger step that's 95 percent of the game whether you have the talent or the look or the whatever the the juice like are you willing to go across the world for something that you kind of want to do even if it's fun right when you get fired you're willing to stay in the country or like you hear about somebody being like oh we're We'll sponsor you, sort of, you know, because, you know, and then she jumps on a train the next day and goes. Or, like, jumping into a Craigslist and being like, I- I'm going to submit myself. Like, that's <laughs> that's the battle. That's the talent right, right there. Right, you know, you yeah, might not yeah. have a game plan or this and that, but how many people can get off their butt and actually, like, right. go for it, you know? Right. And that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. That, that leads me to another question then. Like, how do you deal with or process failure? Uh, t- <laughs> well, see that's the magic that's I real magic yeah, that's the time. you don't need practice yeah, if yeah. you have that mentality if you're literally like a go-getter like hey i want to do this and it's fun boom right. and then if you fail at it you're like man that's it that's right. literally the recipe mm. for success yeah yeah because you have a such a quick bounce back i think that's the thing like i i just um i i've only ever cried over one job and um it was because it was a commercial i was on a veil for uh, to work with friggin' Steve Carell, and I didn't oh. know that until I saw the ad, and I was like, "Are you kidding me? I would be working with Steve Carell." Wow, okay. And then I cried, but I was also laughing, crying, like I wasn't like actually <laughs> depressed about it. Yeah, um, yeah. I I uh, I don't really give myself pep talks or anything. I don't really have anything to like. Like I'm not deep in that way where I'm like, make sure you get your head together. I don't know. Mm. I don't even know how to even explain it. Does anything at all discourage you? Like what are the things that can actually get you down? Nothing. Um, I don't think so. I think that's where I have this like very quiet, but very loud confidence. I don't know where you don't even have pet peeves. What about myself or about other anything. people? <laughs> anything. Yeah. Oh my god, I have pet peeves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my, every, but it doesn't discourage me from creating. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like for some reason I can't think. And I've had a lot of rejection. That's normal. Right. Like every day. But I can't remember a time where it made me stop anything, ever. Mm. I don't know I, why. Straight out of everybody that sat in that chair and we've talked on this pod. I covet that mentality more than anybody mm. else's hard work in mm-hmm. it. You know, the ability to like not really be bothered by stuff, to be able to like laugh off failure and to also just constantly have that like, not just like this overbearing drive and ambition to do something, like, but also the the joy in it. 
You know what I mean? To be like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm, I'm swiping because this is fun to me. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, if I could hold on to that kind of mentality, I feel like everything would be not easy to get success, but like everything would be joyful. So therefore, mm-hmm. I'd be in a state of success. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like that. We, we've had amazingly talented, successful people sit there, but. For me personally, I would want to resonate with that mentality the most mm. to get to where I wanted to get to. And like I sometimes I, you know, have a little bit of a think about it to myself and I'm like, that's weird. But man, I love it. So <laughs> I don't know how it happened like <laughs> yeah. that. I don't know who yeah. taught me that way. I right. don't know why it came about. I think it's just it really I think part of it really might be because I was never doing anything to anyone else's expectations mm-hmm. and I had no standard set for me by anyone so like even if it's just your mom or your dad being like oh it's a shame you didn't win that competition i didn't have that so Mm -hmm. like if i didn't win i just i don't even remember it's just like i don't know how it happened but i've actively tried to keep it that way for sure because did you ever have like uh, a job or something (laughs) never never (laughs) so you've never no i did i thought you're just i just no, no, no. What, what no, I mean, I, what I mean by where I was going was like, like a job that you're like, man, I hate this. Like, why oh. am I here? And you know what I mean? Like that moment where you like, you realize this is not for me, and I gotta yeah. leave this. Yeah, but it's um wasn't something I can complain about. It was more about like, huh, dance rehearsals are they're long. I don't want to do this. That was me because I'm mm. lazy. So I think um when it comes to me being a professional dancer, when I feel like I. You might have asked this before. I didn't really answer it. But when I moved to LA, I didn't have any mindset on like what I want to be. I knew I could dance probably well enough to get a job. Um, I just knew I liked stuff. So <laughs> that was it. Like I have never thought, oh, I need to be a professional dancer. The one thing I knew I, for some reason, didn't want to do, and things have changed, but like this is, you know, a decade ago, I was very, um, for some reason, and I don't know why I thought this either, because I did not grow up in any side, like any kind of um conscious thought of this but like I just did not want to have any type of sex appeal that could be used against me so I was very conscious about if like I'm not going to do a heels class I don't want anyone to have footage of that and I don't know why I had that feeling or that thought I was like worried that I would be perceived in the wrong way and it might be because back then I would judge other people about it Mm. so I think that was like I don't know because usually people might think like that if they're like maybe have a religious background, but I have nothing like that. So for some reason, somewhere along the lines, I found out or I was taught that that's a bad thing to like sell your body in that way. So I think when it came to dance, when I came to LA, I saw that that was the majority of work. And I was like, oh, well, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to have to just do something else. Mm-hmm. Um, not saying I didn't do some of that, but like there were some things that pushed it too far that if I booked a job, there was one time I turned it down. And I was like, mm, I don't want to dress like that for for that. Like, it's not worth it to me. So I think when I moved to LA, I never wanted to be a backup dancer. And it wasn't because there's anything wrong with it. I'm just like, huh, that's a lot of work. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it might have been also a coping mechanism for if I didn't make it. So I tell myself, I'm like, well, I don't really need to do that and I don't want to do it. If I got the opportunity, who knows? But like, mm-hmm. I kind of didn't even go to the audition for it. Mm-hmm. I did like once for Britney Spears and the Catacool audition, maybe not want to go back. <laughs> I was like, this is not fun. Mm-hmm. So I think um, I didn't even dwell on that. It was just like, okay, cool. And then I would go on Craigslist and look for an acting job. So I think, what am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy? I've, I've actually crazy. only also only been on uh, two auditions in my life um and and the second i went on that second one i just knew at that point i was like auditions are not for me again nothing wrong with it for people that like either um find joy in it or like have they thrive in those scenarios and stuff like that i also went to a cattle call audition for like i don't know might have been like a a tablet from microsoft or something like that i don't know (laughs) they had a cattle call audition uh yeah yeah back 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 in the day and um I just remember that it's just not my the way that I like like dancing yeah. uh, in that sense. And then uh, I never my second audition was for a, a, a I think a smartphone and um I was like kind of on shrooms, but that's a whole different story. Uh, <laughs> I, I told on JK News before I think um, worst idea ever. But at the same time, that was like I'm done with this audition thing. Um, and uh, you know from, from 
I guess I resonate with the idea that like there's some things, you know, there's no blanket concept of being a professional dancer or anything like that. You don't do yeah. everything. You don't have to back up dance. You don't have to do this. You just kind of do the things you want to do. Um, and yeah, I get that. Yeah. You know, I think that there's something interesting with you, what you're saying, Ant, like um, the, the concept part, of, huh? yeah, the shroom part. <laughs> That's so interesting. The, the concept of professional dancer, um, I think even like we can take it back, let's say a decade ago. Um, I think it kind of, you, you kind of looked at it in certain categories. Like there's the, the tours, mm -hmm. there's the commercial scene. And then, um, yeah, like that's kind of what I would, you that's know, backup dancing and then yeah. maybe booking a commercial a movie or TV show. But then the backup dancers were the ones booking that too. Right. I didn't see that as a separate group right. of people doing that. It was like the same. But I think yeah. with, with the, you know, the onset of, you know, internet, social media and, and these platforms where people can now post whatever they want to post and whatever becomes like uh, what, what people perceive as something that is entertaining is now people can pursue a career in that if you just do yeah. it well enough and consistently enough and you're getting paid, well, hey, you're a professional dancer or a professional whatever creator. And I think that's really interesting um, and, and it's great. I think it's a great thing because, you know, for somebody like yourself, you're like, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to have to like um, wear certain things or, or or do a certain style of dance that makes me feel like I'm, doing something that's out of my character in order for me to professionally dance. Yeah. And so now you're giving yourself options to be like, well, how about I just do exactly what I want to do and be really good at it. And, and now I'm a professional, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, let's <laughs> call it a dancer. Um, and I think that's really cool. And I think, you know, as I'm hearing you talk about like you having this like agency for yourself to uh, pick and choose what you want to do um you i mean as you put it you don't really necessarily train in any particular type of way but your training is you doing what you do all yeah. the time that's your training and right? in like that you, case i train 24 7 exactly so I'm doing, yeah. yeah like you're sharpening the the knife that you uniquely hold yeah but like you're doing that constantly therefore that that knife keeps getting sharper and sharper yeah i yeah. think that was the main thing like uh i guess just before the pandemic, like my first taste, I love social media. I've always been on it since I had access to it, um, posting every day since I was like however old. But what kind of changed the game for me was the first taste of like viral vibe was when I did So You Think You Can Dance, my audition was uploaded by So You Think You Can Dance and that went viral. And I was like, oh, okay. That was the first time that I actually put my own work out there as an adult in L in America, because everything else I'd done, like that wasn't a new thing for me. I just hadn't done it in that in this decade yet because I was always doing other people's work. I didn't have time to do my own. So when I did So You Think You Dance, I was I think I was like 26 when I did that. So that's kind of old for that show. And I went in there already having a professional career to an extent under my belt. So I deliberately did that um, to to show what I would want to do. I didn't want to do like other people's dancing. Or, so I was like, let me just play and see what happens. And thankfully it was accepted in a good way because it really could have been me mocking the show. And I was worried about that, <laughs> but not worried enough to not do it. Um, but yeah, once I got that, then I realized that people were drawn to just me as like whatever I was thinking or whatever I created. So then that definitely pushed me to do social media more. Mm. And then since then, that was 2019 or 18. Um, and then the pandemic was when I really, that's when I downloaded TikTok and I had space because I, um, me and Ryan had the the studio business. All I needed was space. These ideas are old. These are like, this is what I've been thinking my whole life. I just didn't have access to space and a setup where I could execute the ideas whenever I wanted. So when I had the studio space, I was I've, ever since I've been filming 24 seven and I've just been like knocking out these ideas like every day. Yeah. See, that's crazy. Cause everything that we've been talking about, we, we just started to, to hit the nail on the social media stuff. You, you, you got over 2 million followers on TikTok. You know what I mean? You definitely blew up in, and you said 2018, 2019, that's a short amount of time. You know what I mean? To have like a very, very predominantly large kind of face of like who you are in your career kind of like take off. Number one, how did you really get into that flow? And then also like what's what's come about for your life since, you know, yeah. doing all that? Well, the opportunity has been mind blowing 
So I'll get to that in a second. But um, the flow was there immediate from day one because, like I said, this isn't like a new thing that I was trying. It was just I had the space to do it. I literally just needed a room where I could film because my old apartment, I didn't have that. And I don't want to do this outside in public. And I work completely by myself. So I don't want to have people helping me. Like I just like to do it all by myself. Um, so when, when I started filming, I literally was filming, um, every single day and uploading every single day. The first viral thing that I got on TikTok, um, was me comparing, um, Australian and American words. And it was just me talking. And I did a whole series of that. Um, and then that blew up. And then the next thing was I, I got a moped. And so I was writing about practicing and I had a helmet and I started dancing with my helmet on and that got picked up. (laughs) And then people didn't know that, that was the same person. And then I got picked up because I did, I don't know, whatever was next. But I've always worked in bunches of series. And I'll, for like, I would say a year or maybe even two, it felt like they were very separate and people didn't know that this was the same person. And then there was like a moment where it clicked, where the growth went crazy for, for me anyway, in what I would, in my opinion. Um, and I think people started to realize this was the same person. And then, then the hydraulic stuff came. That was later. So I'd kind of already had on TikTok at least a, a like a good amount of numbers. So then when I thought of that idea, and it's like, I don't really ever sit and think, I don't have sessions where I'm like, let me think of ideas. It's just whenever all the time, I'm just always thinking about really weird shit. Um, and that was just an immediate thing. I just saw a video of the hydraulic press and I'm like, oh, it looks like a dance. Cool. And then I filmed it. <sighs> And then when I filmed it, though, like I I give myself this is where my ego comes in. I'm like, that's a good idea. I'll film at least 10 in one day because I know that I can then like upload them in the next two weeks. Mm. And I'm not predicting it to go well. But for me, I was having a blast. I thought that was funny as hell. So I'm like, let me film a bunch of these. Um, But then that one is absolutely what like took the whole social media thing to another different level that I didn't expect. And it's still going. I don't know why that joke is still going, but I'll milk it until someone really has a problem with it. Um, (laughs) But yeah, so like the, the flow was immediate. Like it really was. And I've never had a day where I've like, it's funny because I've been working with a lot of um, influencers at the moment. Like I, even yesterday I was in a meeting because I'm kind of, in a way working with meta like that is one of the opportunities that is mm-hmm. now somehow mm-hmm. come here where they're pushing me as a creator and i'm like the heck the platform that like it's the platform itself and now wanting to work with me in that way i'm like that is something i never ever wouldn't have gotten from like just doing a catacall audition mm-hmm. as a backup dancer like right. that was like this was a very unique situation just because i put the time and effort into uploading videos and it's nonsense what I'm uploading. So I'm like, it's not even really skill-based. It's just I'm there. But what was I saying? Oh, I like the – because I'm around a lot of influences now and the mentality I often hear is like people will wake up and they're like stressed about, oh, what should I film today? What can I film? I have to upload by this time. Like it, you have to do that. And that's something, again, where my carefree, I don't give a damn mentality has really helped me because I've never given myself deadlines. I've never given myself a strategy. Well, I guess I have a strategy, but I've never given myself a schedule on like, like, I don't even know what it feels like to wake up and be like, oh, I have to post by this time and I don't have an idea. Like, I don't want to put myself in that situation because I know I'd hate it. But do you wake up and you just have the ideas? You just wake up like, oh, this is what I want to do today. And that like consistently every day that just happens. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm like have this amazing bucket of ideas up here. But yeah, to an extent, it's just if I think of an idea, I just film it immediately usually. But I have have a long list. However, my main thing is repurpose footage because I upload old videos every single day. I'm like, I'm lazy. You keep saying that you're lazy. Way. So, well, I mean, in, in my head, that you you're the opposite of lazy. You you do you do what you do every single day. You say you you kind of never really shut off. Yeah, I think I by what you're defining lazy is like you just don't want to do a certain type of work that people consider like, well, that's the kind of work that you need to do to become successful. You're like, no, nah, yeah. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna do my version of work, which is not lazy, but you're just like, I don't want to do that. So yeah. you're defining that. Okay. But like, so, okay, so I'm curious now with you not having a shortage of ideas or creativity, like you, 
you sound as if it just comes to you naturally. Does this come in and of yourself or does this come by way of inspiration? Do you study a certain type of thing that you feel like kind, kind of keeps fueling your inspiration pool? Like, are you a, a craft of, or do you study any particular craft? Um, not intentionally. I think it's very observational stuff. Um, music, obviously, I'm super inspired by that. I love, I, like, I have a series where I break down music where it's very, and I do it in a way where it's like, a dancer could appreciate it, but it's more for the general public. So it's kind yeah, of the vocals versus yeah. the music. Yeah, so yeah. dope. And that's something I used to do as a kid. Like that's like I've that's how I hear music. I feel like that's how a lot of dancers probably like we can break that down easily. But the general public are surprised by it. And so when it's like I'm used to having my friends and my community act like that and understand that like we don't have to talk about it. When the general public sees that and they're like, oh my God, I never thought of just dancing to the vocals. I'm like, man, I didn't that's <laughs> I didn't even think about that. So then it's almost like the one idea I have, I can now break down into a hundred ideas. And I'm like, well, that's my month of work mm. right there. That wasn't what the question was. I don't know why I talked about it. No, 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 it is. No, no, no. There, is. There, there's something, <laughs> you know, again, I'll take it back to that, that earlier thing where the skill of um because because even sitting down and just like waking up and having ideas i feel like i too like just randomly have ideas but the difference is like i don't even act on i get in the way of myself sometimes mm. i'm like i don't know if that's gonna work or like oh that's gonna if i wanted to do that right i would have to blah 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 or like well i gotta focus on this other thing that's not necessarily gonna perpetuate you know what i mean i might have like right. 50 that's things that's how i used to be before, yeah, block out something from make, making me yeah, start. But you know what? The reason that changed for me is because I, and TikTok did this because it's very experimental over there, at least when I first started on it. And the the standard is so low. That's why I started being able to upload my ideas immediately because I didn't have to rehearse with people. I didn't have to hire a DP because I used to be that. I wanted like that. I love the quality of that. High level production is, I love it. But TikTok is the absolute opposite and it thrives on that. And I was like, oh man, they just made it so much easier for me. And so that became my branding deliberately because I realized how much easier it is to execute. And I'm like, well, then I'm going to make sure that that's all I have to do. So I feel like I used to get my, but then all those ideas I had in the last decade or whatever, I have them written down. So now I'm looking at them thinking, how can I execute it in a social media way immediately? And then I can mm. pull from that. So don't lose those ideas. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I'm just applauding the again, just the 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 no nonsense. Like, hey, yeah. I want to do this. I'm gonna do it. It's fun. Or I just thought about this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. Like that. That is again the the quality and the juice that I think is really the most important thing that leads to like success for a lot of people. Not totally. just the uniqueness of of you. Obviously, you're brilliant and, and creative in the way that you do things. But again, I'm just so much more like, dang, the mentality. Uh, oh, of being able to just be like, I'm going to do this. Like, that's cool. That's, mm. that's the power to me. Yeah. But like, now that I'm thinking about it for real, social media is what this is like the part in my career that is now growing. And I think it's because social media really has so much room for anything. And like, it, does, it yeah. doesn't have to look good. And that right. was what would stop me all the time. Like, even if it came to just doing a dance video for Instagram, like five years ago, I'd be like, Oh, First of all, I don't have the space for it. And then like, I want to choreograph this. I want to make sure it looks good because a choreographer could look at it. Now I'm like, it doesn't even matter, man. Look what everyone's doing online. We all look stupid. So I'm just going to join in. Yeah, it really it really doesn't matter. Same thing. Like there's times where, and, and we all know it in here too. We work our asses off on like this, like higher production, like artistic routine. It's like, you know, 20,000 views or something stupid like that. And then we joke around, we do something really, really dumb. That thing goes viral, you know, and, and that's just the same nature. I think the relatability of like yeah. what, you know, the mass kind of population can actually fathom versus something so far away, like a high-end production that's like shot in a really dope spot doing like really, really intricate or difficult dance choreography. It's like, it's not, it's visually nice, but it's not necessarily relatable, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but the idea of like somebody doing something like, drinking cranberry juice and skating down the freeway or something that like that. Hot. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I know what that feels like, or mm -hmm. I know, you know, yeah. and that's the thing that's kind of like viral. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. Social media is just that place where anything can happen. Yeah. It's such, it, and I feel like I'm just practicing every day. Like I, 
I've seen myself, and it's kind of cool because now I've documented every freaking thing right. that I've ever done in the last three years. But like, I'm seeing how things are changing for me, how I'm like, I have a format that works for me. And um, that was all just through experimenting. Like, yeah. And yeah. You mentioned that, um, you know, you, you're around a lot of influencers now and, and you know, you probably hear a lot of like, yeah, the their anxieties and stress of needing to create and then just the like, oh, what do I need? Like, wh what can I do now? And there's just that stress that comes yeah. with it, right? Because you're now, you put this label on yourself or you have these, you know, these brand deals that have all these deadlines and things like that. And from what I gather from you, you don't seem to really struggle with that anxiety. Um, now, this might have to be a little bit like even dissecting a little bit of like what you kind of naturally have, but maybe you don't realize what you're doing. If I were, let's say I'm, I'm somebody who's like, I'm stressed, like smack, help me. How do you not stress? Like, what would you say to somebody like me to be like, hey, it's going to be okay. And here's why, or here's how to like, not be there you know what i mean this here's how to yeah. navigate through things like that what would you say to somebody this who's is always struggling hard. With it that? depends who it is because if they're close to me then i can be a bit more real but my motto that i've always gone by and i don't preach this because it's pretty negative but um <laughs> no one cares is what i go by that's how i've always told that's why i tell myself i'm very hard on myself in that sense where i'm like even if i do something amazing no one really cares so as long as i have fun with it that's all i can really that's all that actually matters um I think if I'm going to get into like actual strategy to help people if they seem to be stressed, I would say like, well, first of all, it sounds like you're doing a little too much. So figure out how you can do stuff in bulk. And then that way you can take the month off because you've already filmed 30 videos in two mm -hmm. days or something. Cause mm -hmm. that's how I work a lot of the time. I do chunks and I don't do it that deliberately. I just like, I just have a blast when I do that. So like if I film a video then I'm like, oh, I'm inspired. And then I film another five videos. And that's not like they're all really difficult. A lot of them are very easy. So, but I just like, I love the idea of having a backlog of content because I really go for a long time without actually filming something when I, I mean, no, that's a lie. But I, <laughs> I just have a lot of videos no, that I, I can pull saying. from. Right, right. And then I always tell people um, to repurpose footage because yeah. some of my best uh videos i've got online are like compilations of old videos so mm -hmm. i'm like how can you give yourself a break by just spending five minutes editing an old video and then that way you don't have to do your hair and makeup it's great <laughs> yeah <laughs> makes sense you know um yeah as you're talking about uh doing the thing that's genuinely you and if it's just you and you have a blast doing it the the criticism doesn't really matter um the praise doesn't really matter nor do the negative um comments really matter um i'm a big fan of uh gary v gary vaynerchuk he he always says like you know find the thing that you actually care about doing and figure out a way to make that like whether that's your career or just a big part of your life right yeah. so like if you're doing the thing that you really love doing he says like the praises don't affect you, but neither do the booze, right? And like, because it's like, it doesn't matter. I'm not doing it for you anyway. I'm doing, I would have done this for free. You know, I'm doing this because it's something that genuinely excites me. Um, I feel like from the way that you're talking about your personal philosophy towards um, not just content creation, but just how you sort of just, you know, your mindset towards life. It's, I'm going to do what I want on my terms. And, and if I don't like it or if it doesn't work out, I'll, I'll do something else. Yeah. And it's, um, I think that that second part is what can be stressful, right? Cause yeah. you know, uh, a lot of people are like, well, what, what is that something else? Well, I don't have that much in my wheelhouse to be able to go from this to this other thing, yeah. you know? But I think, um, the way that you approach, uh, life, you seem to have this mentality of like, everything will always work out. Cause when has it not? Right. And yeah. and even in those lulls in those times where I mean, we've all had like, wow, everything's really exciting. Like the past month has been really eventful and da 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 da. And then we'll have like a month or so. It's like, oh, there really wasn't that much excitement this month. And somehow we go from a high to that become sort of a, a low. Yeah. When it's not a low, it's just neutral. But because we experience such a high that the neutrals feel like a low. And so I think just to have the mindset of it's okay and it will always work itself out. And, and you know, 
life will always ebb and flow. It's never up and up and it's never always down. Yeah. It does this, you know? And so as long as you know, this is normal when it's here, you just got to trust that that's normal, but you'll find your way back up and find your midpoints and all that. And- yeah. I think that's why, like, I maybe it really helped me that I friggin' moved countries at 20 years old because I have always thought of everything as temporary, the good and the bad. So, like, I'm sure I've gone through bad stuff and I'm, I am lucky that I haven't gone through tragedy or anything like that yet, but I don't even remember it because it was temporary. So, I feel like I, like if I really try to think, I'm like, oh yeah, break up back then or something. But like, oh, I'm fine now. So whatever. But mm. I think that's yeah, it's it's hard for people to navigate because that's also just how you grow up learning about how to navigate that. And mm-hmm. no one really taught me. So I kind of just didn't know that you had to worry about it, maybe. I don't know. Either way, it's a helpful mentality. Again, I think if more people, like myself included, again, you know, could adopt like uh or, or or live by you know what i mean mentalities of like uh, i like when you say things like uh no one cares you know what i mean mm-hmm. because like, like both for the real I've good and the bad so right long. it's like if you do something amazing you're like ah, nobody really cares move on to the next or if like you fuck up or you do something that you're embarrassed by and it's like hey no one really cares and, yeah. and you move on like that actually is helpful for you to constantly stay like in tune with what you are and what you want to do to to just your mentality of you know just being like, I don't. I don't think it's a matter of uh, just not f- remembering, or you know what I mean. Things that didn't happen well, or you know, uh, just not things being so temporary that it's kind of like, oh, it didn't happen. Like it doesn't affect you moving forward. But being able to hold on to a temporary mindset in general, I think, is really, really, really useful. Mm-hmm. It, it just helps with progression it just helps with moving forward day after day you know what I mean? i'm sure that you're subconsciously or consciously still affected you know yeah. positively negatively whatever by anything that you've experienced but like just that temporary mindset is like a golden way to constantly push forward and i think that again i i covet that for sure i think yeah, it's an amazing for sure. perspective for sure what does a, a typical day for you look like is it always <laughs> different is there is there some aspects that are always the same kind of routine like um i sleep in me and ryan usually sleep in until like 12 or 1. <laughs> nice. so you guys are you guys night owls you guys just up yeah all? yeah okay. yeah um and then in bed i will in five minutes already post it on four platforms um scheduling is a thing now on on social media so that's kind of cool but i always i usually i mean sorry i'm backtracking a little bit but a lot of my content is inspired by what people say so I love trolls. I don't, I'm lucky <laughs> that I don't get that much because people are more confused by what I'm doing. So they don't know how to attack it. And I'm also kind of making fun of myself first. So they don't, they're like, well, she already called herself a fool, I guess. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But so I'm constantly inspired by what people say and I can reply to comments with content that I've already filmed a year ago. So I sit in bed doing that for a while and then I'll eat some chocolate. We use, I usually have chocolate milk and then um, we play with our bunny. And then um, I'll probably film something or hang out with Ryan. Um, basically, I try to stay home as much as possible in my pajamas. That's my vibe. That's the American dream right there. It's You're so literally. dreamy and American. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and then I'll do some chores and then usually a self-tape. So yeah, mm. that's what I do if um, no one's telling me to do anything else, which is mm-hmm. kind of a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. So this is a special day. You coming out of your? This is crazy. Your, you're doing the most <laughs> of your podcast. This I gotta do like, something. Yeah, this is like way. This at, is like, so way strange. Much. No, but this is the stuff that I love doing. Like, mm. yeah. So I'll schedule in a nap later, and then <laughs> I do have some. Like I woke up this morning, um, and I was inspired by someone's comment. So I'm like, oh, I want to film something because that was funny to me. I don't care if it's funny to anyone else, but like, so now when I go home, I'll probably film a few videos. Cause mm, why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I um, napping is life. Um, napping great. and snacking, and nobody cares. Is kind of <laughs> my well. I love that. So yeah. <laughs> she, uh, she's living in the year three thousand right really now. Are. Dude. Like, <laughs> what really are we are. doing, dude? Um, you know, uh, you're we're, you're talking so much about. I mean, we're we're talking about a lot of like career related things, right? And and. Uh, and how you creatively approach your career and kind of make it on your own terms. And um, though you say you don't really have like 
you know, these like 10 year goals and things like that. But you you work hard um, doing what you love to do. So probably doesn't feel like work, but you you know, you you are creating a future for yourself. And, um, you know, we all have some version of success that we're sort of chasing. Um, but the beautiful thing about it and, and, you know, every guest that sits in that seat will have their own definition of success. Um, how would you define success? Um, I think for me, it's probably just like, if I'm happy, then I feel very successful. Like I love being relaxed. Um, I love the freedom. So like if, oh man, before pandemic, I was super busy with, not that this is bad. This is like a goal as well, but I was really busy with multiple agencies doing auditions all day long. It was, it was a lot. So I, I didn't get to nap and I was like, I don't like that. <laughs> Um, Got it. Yeah. And then I also didn't have time to create. So the pandemic kind of really shifted it. I think it did that for a lot of artists and creators. Like it kind of made you realize like where you kind of want to prioritize a bit more. So now I, I've relaxed into that mode. I don't want to leave it. Um, so yeah, I think I, I feel successful in the sense that I'm like, this is happy. I'm really, I'm comfortable. I'm content. And I have the freedom, which is However, could be very temporary. So I'm going to live in it right now. Um, goals wise, like I kind of look at um, like I have to acknowledge that things are growing for me. Something that I would love to avoid is like fame. <laughs> I kind of just so dumb. I don't know why I'm here um, doing this. But yeah, I think the lifestyle of living with a certain level of fame looks very not cool to me not mm. cool but like i just would not and i wouldn't right. have fun with that it's too many people telling me what to do um too many just things you have to worry about and like i just don't want that so i'm kind of like a little bit like i like where i am right now and i don't want <laughs> don't want it to get mm. any worse i kind of want to be anonymous um but then I think about like, okay, well, damn, if things are going to like grow for me and I'm going to continue in this air, in this way because I don't want to stop, I think I'm like, how can I still grow and leave room to grow and for unexpected growth, but then not have to be worried about that idea of like too many people know who I am or whatever. Um, that's made me shift more into like, okay, well, I want to do children's entertainment because kids aren't really annoying like adults will be. And it just feels more anonymous for some reason. Mm -hmm. It feels like they, I have a lot of people already tell me that like their kids watch my work and it resonates with them. And I'm like, I think it's because it's like, that's my child mind right. yeah. creating it still. So I think that's something that in the last two years, I've always thought that, but in the last two years, I'm like, oh, that's actually a possibility. So maybe I'll chase that. If an opportunity comes, I'm going to go with it. So I think that's like, that would be a really cool, rewarding, successful feeling to like maybe do that side mm -hmm. of things. What else was it? What are you saying? No, that was, that yeah. was amazing. That, <laughs> That's awesome. I'm still, I'm, you're like, you're like climbing the tries to be my, my new goals right now. My new inspiration <laughs> for everything. No, no Just, goals. Don't have goals. No, no <laughs> I'm fine. No goals. Your goal is to have You're no temporarily goals. <laughs> climbing the charts for me. Um, but for, for even somebody to be like, yeah, you know, like, I don't want fame. Well, well, I mean, it no, just I, but I, me. I, no, I get it, I get it. But I'm just saying, like, you know, you're almost like the the anti-hero of like success in, in in the perfect and beautiful way as well. Um, just there are people that are out there that are like I want to be famous. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's a definition of success. Nothing wrong with it at yeah. all. But like, I vibe with the way that you're saying. Well, it. that's also you know, a very it's like saturated right now because everyone has access to it with social media i feel like mm -hmm. literally anyone can be famous overnight for an amazing reason or for a weird reason but i think that's why i'm like thinking about it more is because this could be an overnight thing and i'm like i don't know if i'm maybe i'm not ready for it or maybe i just really don't want it <laughs> mm. but then it's like but I'd, well, how how do i prevent that you kind of can't it's kind of a catch-22 so, right yeah because yeah. it's like obviously everything i've ever done my whole life is for other people to see like, mm -hmm. so I'm like, what the heck? What do I do with this? <laughs> and I love that realistically, everything that you said in your definition for success is to be able to take more naps. Like, that's <laughs> that's really what it comes down to. And I'm like, that. Like, just not being amazing. bothered by anyone is a dream. So um, hopefully it can stay like that for a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> I, I love know. that. 
Well, uh, we like to wrap up each episode with a fun little lightning round. So we're going to oh. toss some quick fire questions. Okay. Maybe some are not so lightning, but we'll do our best. Here we go. Lightning round. Three, two, one. What's your favorite cartoon? Rugrats. It's not. I think it's The Simpsons. I don't know. Ooh, both, <laughs> both great. Both great. <laughs> what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Chocolate. Duh. <laughs> Who is your childhood hero? Um, Frank Woodley is a, a Australian comedian from Lionel Woodley. That's the reason I do everything. When was the last time you cried? Um, uh, kind of recently because um, not recently, but like maybe a few weeks ago because um, I possibly have a a thing happening where I'm gonna <laughs> be in an exhibit in the biggest art gallery in Australia, and I cried because I was like, that is freaking crazy. <laughs> That's so it's not totally confirmed yet, but if that happens, that's probably going to be the craziest milestone I never knew could even happen. Wow. And I cried because of it. That's amazing. Like awesome. just a little tear. Dead or alive, if you can have coffee with somebody, who would it be? I would have tea. Tea. With? Uh, I, would, I think I would usually say Jim Carrey, but I don't know if I'd be able to hold a good enough conversation for him. So I'd be like apologetic the whole time. <laughs> um. Yeah, maybe tea with um. Oh, God, I'm so lame. I was gonna say tea with my bunny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which I do that every day. Yeah, maybe uh, the people that really influenced me, which is uh, Frank Woodley and Colin Lane. Um, I've had the pleasure of connecting with them over the years, and it would be cool to have another cup of tea with them. Not Ooh. that I've had one. It'd be cool to have a cup. Have a cup. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Next question. Wow. Dead or alive? Who would you want to collaborate with? them and sesame street i thought about that yesterday oh All yeah you sesame posted street. about that I yeah saw i'm that. like that'd be so cool that would be cool yeah have you ever been in a fight what do you mean just what? like a fight no with that girl online <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> That's, but i didn't even engage so no i uh no i've never been in a fight yeah I'd... you just look like somebody that has like absolutely no animosity that's crazy too yeah no i yeah no fight that's boring good. i would never do that support i don't know that. how what would be a so dream cool. opportunity for you? Um, I think based on a, a small taste of it last year, I think um, having like a weird sort of art performance art segment TV show for Nickelodeon because I, I got to do a little bit of that last year. And mm. I'm like, I would love to do that more maybe this year. That makes sense. Super yeah. cool. What is a hidden talent of yours? I can scream very, very loud. <gasps> I don't know if we want to demo yeah, here. No. You might blow. Whenever people ask out. me, they're like, well, this is not the best place to do that. <laughs> Can you do it like that way? Are you sure? Yeah, why not? Just, <laughs> just like for like three oh, seconds oh, oh, max. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I need a pee. It's going to be bad. Okay, are you sure? Yeah, I just want to. Look at me t twisting my lungs. It's going to be not as loud. Okay, I'm sorry, neighbors. Are you sure for yeah, real? Yeah, well, let's just see what happens. There are a couple of, I mean, well, is it like a distressful scream or is it like a I'm funny a scream? Nervous. What do you mean? What's a funny scream? <laughs> <laughs> Or you mean? Uh, I, no, it's I, like I a yeah, I'm, not, I'm not trying to have people knock on my door as if like you know. I'll do it really quick. It's gonna yeah, sound really, like a really quick. Yeah, really, really quick. Yeah. Countdown. Countdown. Okay, go. Three, two, one. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, it's one of those. Whoa. Oh my that gosh. My brain. I felt yeah. it like come back from the Whoa. wall to my. Yeah, How long can you hold that? I don't know. I'm not gonna try now. Yeah, don't try it well, now. It's also park. good that you have that skill. I mean, you never know when you know that. Comes and I in found handy. that out because as a kid, we did a thriller dance, and the dance teacher was like, "Can someone scream at the beginning?" And we're all trying to out scream each other, and I won. Wow. And so yeah. Is that like you could break a glass with the screen like that? Oh my that god, I should like try. That not might, here. That might. That's, that, that's wow. a good one. I don't know why that's what I thought. Uh, How was that for Chad's headphones? <laughs> yes. I'm I took them off. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Do you have any guilty pleasures or vices? No, because I don't feel guilty about stuff. Um, because I feel like everyone's like, oh, I eat too much chocolate, but that is the best time of my life. Um, so yeah, I I like reality TV though. Okay. I got into it last year. Any, what specifically? Yeah, any show Which, like I watched The Bachelor last year and I'd never uh, had done that before. I haven't watched The Bachelor either. Yeah. I mean, I'm watching it like laughing at it a little bit, but you know. Got it. You seem like you laugh at almost everything. Well, yeah. Do you laugh at like inappropriate things or things that you feel like you shouldn't laugh at, but like you do? Like Kinja's videos or anything? But, yeah. 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 No? No, those are, the, those are my top comedy list. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> 
<laughs> like my biggest comedy inspiration. <laughs> um, I yeah, I, I probably do, but I um, yeah, I get, I'm just gonna say yes because I don't God, have any other solid, reaction to solid. it. I guess. Um, what is your favorite quality about yourself? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I like that I am, am just so content and so happy and can have a blast hanging out by myself. <laughs> That's amazing. That's, That's very so, good. That's very so good. sad. <laughs> if, if you could go back in time and tell yourself, tell your, let's say your your 12-year-old self one piece of advice, what would that be? Um, hey, great. Keep going. <laughs> um, yeah. I I mean listen I I'd probably be like you know at some point you probably could stretch but you're still fine without it so just so you know wow <laughs> like it will catch up to you, you but give. it catches yeah. up to everyone even if they stretch so I'm like well I love it I love it uh, so we love uh, exploring this concept of mastery the the ability to put in so much time and focus into a single thing whether that be something grand or something small, but we we all have the ability to sort of uh, gain mastery over something. Bruce Lee has this quote, he says, I fear not the man that has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man that has practiced one kick 10,000 times. Uh -huh. So wow. the concept of just focusing on one thing so much that you gain mastery over it, is there anything that you feel like you've gained mastery over? <clears throat> no <laughs> i don't know i that's where i i would feel regretful if i said yes because then i'm like nah there's still so much more to get better at um but however my another motto i have is eh, good enough so i'm not trying to be a master because <laughs> that's a lot of work <laughs> and like it really is good enough to not be a master mm -hmm. at it don't you feel like that's a skill that you've mastered the ability to do that because okay I could, I could say so, that okay. i could just be like <laughs> okay, yeah like i'm just gonna be like um, it's good enough but i don't really believe it if i say it because i don't think i've mastered that i think you really oh, know yeah. how to okay do that i have yourself. mastered that yeah. but i do definitely realize that that's not um that that's just a personal thing because everyone else would be like that is not a skill you should ever try to master but i did <laughs> so, hey as long as you did yeah. it Plus, in terms of one kick 10,000 times, she might be on like 10,000 hydraulic press videos soon. You know what I mean? Yeah. So might, yeah, there will I be a master of hydraulic one. press uh, interpretation. Am I, I guess Absolutely. I'm kind of the only person doing it still for some reason. I don't know why. But um, so I guess I'm still, yeah, I'm the only person there. So I'm sort of a master of it, I guess. I so all I'm doing is bending it. my knees, though. It's not crazy. <laughs> It's it's pretty crazy. It well, is pretty when, crazy. It's like when you're like speed ramping certain things to the right level. You are you are kind of and speed then the details. Things, right? Like I was I was a fan of the avocado, the leg out. Thing. Yeah, it just, it was, pulling like it was blankets just... out of your like gut to make sure the colors match. Pretty good. <laughs> That's, That's pretty good. good. Just it's lo-fi, so it's good enough. You know, That's <laughs> good enough. Good pretty enough. Freaking good enough. <laughs> uh smack well thank you so much for coming through and hanging out with us and uh i personally just had a really fun time getting to know you this is the first conversation i think i've ever had with you i yeah. think i ran into <laughs> you a couple times in arts district and things like that and um but i personally am super inspired um yeah we your creativity kind of goes without saying that's all good i mean that's the stuff that like yeah, people recognize you for, but I think in this conversation, what I am personally inspired by is your outlook on life being simple. And I think we um, we can be very tempted to overcomplicate things and think a little bit too hard about every little thing where realistically we have no control over most most things. You know, we yeah. can really only have control over what's right in front of you. What happens today is all I have control over. I have no idea what tomorrow looks like. So for me to worry about tomorrow would actually do nothing but put more harm to me than actual benefit. And I feel like you have this ability to um, not just like uh, simplify things because it's easy. I think it's because you realize that that is the thing that you have the most joy is just being so present with uh, the present thing that's right in front of you that you can just pour um, all your focus and energy into. Um, I think 
uh, so many people, myself, uh, yeah, definitely speaking for myself, can very much learn from that. Uh, really cool to just feel your energy. Yeah, like kind of what Ant was saying. I, I don't feel any sort of like, I don't, yeah, I, I can't sense any negativity coming from you. And I don't think that that's like this thing that you're trying to put out. I just think that's what you live. And um, it's cool to receive that. So, yeah, Thank just you wanted guys. to acknowledge you for that. Thanks yeah. for having me. I'm Absolutely. like, why would you want me here? Precisely so for this. This is funny to like get to talk to you guys because I've never really had proper conversations with you guys. Mm. But obviously, I know who you are. Here we are. See, this is where we do it in this space. Honestly, yeah. Like Ben said, your outlook, I think it just personally resonates with me so much. Like I'm actually like <laughs> genuinely inspired by just the way you go about stuff that I, I want to adopt a lot more of that. I think we're always like... You know, you hear something, it's not profound, but it's like simple enough that it's like life changing. Like you said, it's you profound, know what I mean? Yeah, in in yeah. that way. Mm -hmm. And just you, you have that the, the way that what I would want more in my life is more of your outlook. That's what I'm like. Wow. I'm, I'm impressed by it. So thank you so much for joining us. I know even your eyebrows right now, you're like, the fuck? Like, well, I'm like, don't, that's, that's my like, favorite yeah, right I'm now. Just, I'm Jeez. worried because you guys have such a good standard of everything. I'm like, okay, well, don't lose that. Like... <laughs> Don't not care enough to my level that you you're like, my people are like, what like happened this? to his dancing? I'm like, yo, right after we talked to Smack, for some reason, so stop like, caring, man. He just stopped trying. I don't know why he sucks now. <laughs> so I'm sorry if that's what happens. It's like, why did Anthony buy a hydraulic press? <laughs> yeah, what is he doing? <laughs> no, no, it's really good, really good. Uh, is there anything uh, that people should be on the lookout for? Or anything that you would like for people to know about? Um... I don't have any secrets. It's all out there. Okay, currently. where can people where can people find you on social and all that? Um, my handle is at Smack Macrina on all platforms. Boom. Except for Snapchat, I don't have that, so don't Except look Snapchat. for me there. I, I, don't, I don't have a Snapchat either. Yeah, I do. I still have mine. I don't use it, but oh, well, I'm, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I think exactly. I have an account. I don't do you guys have Be Real? No, no. Okay. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, I have like eight followers on there, so. I don't even it's have cool. a. Oh, I don't even use Facebook anymore. I, this isn't about me. Let's go ahead and close it up. <laughs> well guys thank you so much for tuning in uh for watching and or listening thank you so much for stopping by if you guys are finding this episode by itself we have a lot more episodes before this we have amazing guests like smack uh so feel free to tune in on those episodes if you're really digging what we're doing feel free to hop onto itunes leave us that five star rating write us a review Tag us, follow us on our socials, Kendra's podcast, Cast with the K. Feel free to screenshot you listening. I love regramming all of that stuff. And uh, we love you guys. We appreciate y'all. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Kendra out. Bang. Kendra Bang. Remember, no one cares. No one. No one. Everything's temporary. They care a little bit. Okay, everybody oh, cares, man. but like. People care a little bit. All right. Okay, I'm confused now. <laughs> Just delete that whole episode. <laughs>